Hello and welcome back to Matt Hayes Tottenham blog and to another very, very special transfer show with the one and only, the man of the window, Fabrizio Romano, to discuss so much Tottenham transfer news. And of course, we will be touching on Harry Kane towards the end of it as well. But Fabrizio, first of all, how are you getting on today? Hello, 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 my friend. Thank you for the invitation. Big pleasure to be together. Always a pleasure to have you on, absolutely. Uh, quickly, before we do about, dive into the transfers, uh, a bit of breaking news today with regards to Tottenham and the European Club Association have said that Tottenham and the other eight teams who have left the European Super League have been reinstated into the association and will now begin their reintegration into European club football, which is, of course, some good news for Spurs. But, uh, Fabrizio, I'm sure there's uh, people who want you here to talk about a lot of other things. Uh, we're going to start with the, the back line because you today and Alistair Gold have been saying that Tottenham are still looking for another centre-back. And one of the names that is being mentioned is that of Nikola Milenkovic, the current Fiorentina centre-back, who does have only one year left on his contract. I know he was in talks with West Ham uh, last week or the week before, but Tottenham are now in talks as well. Uh, what can you tell us about that transfer? Yes, it's one of the possibilities. They're looking for a centre-back and uh, he's always been in the list of Paratic. I don't know if you remember, but when they were negotiating for Romero, at one point they had two options. The priority was Romero, but the plan B was to sign with the same money three different players that were Zuma, Milenkovic and Tomiyasu. So they were planning for two different strategies and they decided to go for Romero as total priority. Uh, but Milenkovic has always been a player in the list of Fabio Paratici, so it's, it's nothing new, I would say, at the moment, because there is still no bid in place from Tottenham, but they have an interest, and as you know, as, the, as I said many times, Paratici works like this, in contact with many players in the same position, and then he decides who is the real target, so let's see if in the coming hours or days... Uh, they will go for a bid with, for, for Nikola Milenkovic, but for sure he's one of the players in the list of Tottenham, together with the other names. And I will keep an eye on, on Milenkovic also for West Ham, because now at the moment the negotiations are a bit quiet after they were really close, but they had no agreement also with, with the player and with Fiorentina, and that's why the situation is still open for Milenkovic, but I will keep his name in the list for, for Tottenham centre-backs. Brilliant. And uh, another name that is in that list, uh, and I see someone asking it there in the chat, is of course Pau Torres. I think it was last week, uh, potential interest there from, from Spurs was, was initially reported from Italy. Is, is there anything you can tell us on that? Is that interest genuine? I never spoke about this transfer because I'm told that at the moment there is nothing like advanced on this point. Uh, you know, I know Paratici's strategy, so many times you have many, many names and uh, every day you have a different name because it's also having contacts and having contacts with agents, with clubs, but it's not something advanced for Pau Torres at the moment. If we'll become an advanced transfer, maybe in the next days, I will update you, but as of now I'm told that there is nothing like close to be completed and uh, also for, for Kunde there was similar situation. They were talking, they are, are, were in advanced talks with Sevilla for Kunde, but then the player didn't want to to go to Champions Champ, he wanted to go to Champions League clubs and that's why the situation is now quiet for Kunde and for Pau Torres. Yeah, I think that's going to be a, a big concern that comes along for Spurs quite a bit in this window, just the lack of Champions League football. Um, I think that, that could turn a lot of potential targets away from us. But one name that you've already mentioned that has been, you know, for the last couple of weeks we're hearing from different sources that it's imminent and it was supposed to be announced after the Olympics and that is Takahiro Tamiyasu. Is that still something Tottenham could be actually pursuing or with the, the kind of struggles to get rid of Serge Aurier and, of course, the fantastic performance yesterday of Jaffa Tanganga? Do you think Tamiyasu is one that may have been put on the back burner a bit? Yes, Tanganga, yes, did great. Yes, they did great. And so, you know, I think also the, the move uh, to Galatasaray now is not going to go through because, of course, the player is showing up all his, his, his skills now also in this position. And talking about Tomiyasu, yes, he's still one of the names. I would keep in the same list with Milenkovic, you know, uh, because Paratic is always in contact with his agents. And Tomiyasu is another player that Tottenham, that Tottenham really liked because he could play as right back, but also a centre back. And sometimes he was even playing also as left back with, Tot with uh, Bologna. So imagine how, how special is this guy, and that's why Tottenham are really keen on him. But there is still no new official bid. The last one was more than one month ago for 18 million euro, and Bologna want at least 20, 25 million euro to sell to sell to Miyazu. Let's see in the next days. I will keep his name together with, with Milenkovic in the list, but it's not at final stages yet. Perfect. Um, just quickly before we move on to midfielders, a few potential uh, defensive departures. Is there anything on uh, Sergio or Davinson Sanchez or maybe even Ben Davis uh, to, to see in the next few days? Hey, they hope to find some solution because also selling players is so important. So let's see what happens with Davinson Sanchez. Let's see what happens with Ben Davis. Orie also, he was one of the players in the list to leave the club, but now there are no advanced talks yet. But Tottenham hoping in the final two weeks, many clubs that there were maybe waiting for the final weeks to open some talks for players knowing that they are on the market and might, maybe now they can appear and they can open talks. So let's follow this situation in the coming few days. 
Brilliant. I think there's a, a few Spurs fans saying maybe we should hold on to them given the performance yesterday. Uh, but I, I think uh, there may be some of them moving on. Uh, going on to midfielders, and I see Adel asking in the live chat about Nahitan Nandes, who you reported yesterday. There was uh, some contacts between Tottenham and Cagliari. Uh, is this one that is top of Paratici's priority list, or could just this just be another name in uh, in a big pool of players? No, there is still no official bid, uh, still no nothing advanced, but he's one of the names that Tottenham have been inquiring in the last few days, talking directly with Cagliari. Uh, the player is on the market because he's desperate to leave. Cagliari wants to try something new, and we're talking about, in my personal opinion, an interesting player, really, really good. He could play in a three midfield, he could play as a winger, he can play wherever in the midfield or in a potential attacking positions because he's really good. He's a fighter, he's always running for the team, so he's also perfect for Tottenham style, I would say. So he's a, he's a runner, he's a good player with good stamina, he's really, really good. But at the moment, there is still nothing advanced because Tottenham want to decide if they want to sign a player in this position or not. If they will go, Nandes is one of the options for sure. They have been in contact with Cagliari because the player was really close to join Inter. Then they decided to go for Denzel Dumfries from PSV Eindhoven as new, as new right back. And now let's see what happens with, with Nandes. But he's one of the names in the list for, for Tottenham, yes. And I've seen a lot of teams being linked to him. I think Leeds were, were interested in him earlier in this window. Also, and yes. if it, you know, if it's a player that Marcelo Bielsa uh, wants to bring in, there must be a lot of talent and a lot of kind of grit in, in the way he plays. So that's that's a very interesting link and one that uh, I think I'd be excited to see Tottenham potentially pursue. In my opinion, he's perfect for the Premier League. He's really perfect for the Premier League. So that's why Paratici knows that he's an opportunity because he's on the market now and he stated in public that he wants to leave Cagliari. But just because Tottenham know that he's an opportunity, they will go for him if they will be convinced to sign this kind of player. So they have his name in the list and we will see. Brilliant. Um, another midfielder that was mentioned today, um, I don't know if you've even seen it yet because it was only in the last hour or so, but uh, Iac uh, Mariba, the, the young Barcelona 18-year-old, have you heard anything on a potential move for him? A really complicated situation with Mariba because Barcelona wanted to extend his contract, then now they are they have problems with the player and with his agents because he's not accepting this new contract. Laporta was so strong, the president of Barcelona, with the player because he was not happy with the situation. So now we have a lot of links with English clubs because Barcelona think that there are English clubs behind Moriba and that's why he's not accepting the new contract. Right. But at the moment, I'm told that he's not, he's not advanced yet with Tottenham. There is nothing like advanced stages at the moment. We will see if in the coming days it will be an opportunity. We will see if some English club will jump in the deal. But from Barcelona, they think that English clubs are secretly behind the player and these agents pushing to making him refusing the new contract and trying to hijack the move. Well, I think that with Barcelona, anything is really possible at this point. You never know what they're, what they're going to do next. Um, I see Lorsch and someone else there in the live chat, uh, Matt Reigns, asking about Mikel Danskor. Uh, you know, so many links earlier in the summer. Uh, Sampdoria seeming not too reluctant to, to let him go. I think there was, have they offered him to um, to Roma in the last few days? Is there anything with regards to a Tottenham bid potentially for Damsgaard? A lot of rumours, but still no bid for Damsgaard. Uh, it's one of the players that Tottenham and many other English clubs are monitoring, so I will keep an eye on him till the last day of the window because it could be a surprising move for many clubs, not just for Tottenham. So he's one of the players that is keeping secret also because his agent is so serious and secret and that's why nothing is coming out in the press but uh, i think it's something that will happen in the in the if will happen because sandoria want around 30 35 million euro i think it will happen in the, in the final days of the window so keep an eye on this one but it's not something advanced as of now for tottenham there are many clubs inquiring and situation is still a bit quiet brilliant uh, we got a few super chats there thank you to our viewers for sending them in uh, we santosh uh, with the eight dollars says is there any news on noni madueki no, at the moment it's not advanced. From what I'm told, it's not advanced. It's one of the names that Tottenham have been monitoring before Fabio Paratici arrived, but it's not something they are working on now also because PSV, PSV sold Malen, they sold Dumfries, so selling also Madweke could be a problem for the club, and that's why at the moment it's not easy, it's not something advanced now. Brilliant. Uh, we have Jason as well. Thank you, Jason, for the Super Chat. Says, Do you think there will be any movements within Tottenham this week? And also he wants to know if Arsenal are in talks with Conte. <laughs> Uh, who is in, co in talks with Conte? Sorry, I think he's asking if Arsenal are in talks with Antonio Conte. Ah, no, 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 no. At the moment, Conte is on vacation and he's happy like this. He had many opportunities, but Conte is not the manager to jump during the season. You know, he needs to work with the team. So maybe it could happen if some top club will call him, if Arsenal will change their position. But now they're happy with Arteta, so uh, they they are not looking at it. And talking about Tottenham, yes, I think yes. This this week, I expect. Tottenham to do something. I don't know if it will be official or not, but for sure they are working on many deals as always with, with Fabio Paratici. They're really, 
they're really excited because you know starting the week starting the, the the league as they did winning against Manchester City with this kind of performance so good also from players that you know better than me they were discussed like Bergwijn and Lucas Moura and they were really good yesterday so they're really good the atmosphere is really good and Paratici is working so well with, with Nuno so they're really in a good atmosphere now and I think that this week Saturday could happen. Yeah, and I think even just touching on the game there, we got a very interesting insight into into Paratici when he was down in the dugout with the with the players, and he was you know he was getting up, he was cheering them on, he was he was enjoying that game as if he were a fan, which I think was very interesting. Um, it's not something we've typically seen from Steve Hitchin in the past, but he was right down there with uh, Paratici yesterday. It was brilliant to see. Oh, he, he um, loves to work directly with the players. Uh, also in the training ground, also to be at the training with the players, and maybe he's there talking and on the phone and on his phone sending messages, but he's always there. He likes the relationship directly with the players, so he's part. He's part of the team. He's not just a director. He's part of the of the atmosphere of the team, and this is why he has been one of the secrets of Juventus for so many years. They won the title nine times in a row, and he was the director. And it's not casual. Oh, I love it. I think Spurs fans are quickly going to fall in love with him. Um, we have Adam in the live chat asking about Yassine Adli from Bordeaux. If there's any links with Spurs. No, at the moment, no. AC Milan are negotiating for him. They want him as midfielder. For Spurs at the moment, is not something like serious or concrete. We will see. Maybe if AC Milan tolls will collapse, could be an opportunity. But as of now, AC Milan are leading the race, are front runners for Adelaide. So they have chances also because their midfielder, Cassie, is injured now. They need a new midfielder and Adley is the priority. Brilliant. Uh, just a few more midfielders I want to ask you about quickly before we move on to the, the crazy striker situation. Uh, a lot of reports from Portugal in the last week that Joao Palinha from Sporting Lisbon could be subject to a Spurs bid. Is, is that interest concrete? We will see. At the moment, I'm told that it's not a priority. It's not a priority. It's not something advanced. This player has been rumored for many different clubs, Everton, Wolves. Now it's time for Tottenham because he's a good player, but I'm told that at the moment it's not advanced. It could be an opportunity at the end of the window for many clubs, but not something imminent for Spurs now. Perfect. Um, Karen Tantaliso of uh, Bayern Munich, anything there? Opportunity. This is a good opportunity because he's out of contract in one year. He's not a starter with Nagelsmann, so Fabio Paratic is always keeping an eye on this kind of situation. But get used to it, guys, to hear 10 different names because, as you say, this Paligna, Tolisso, Zaccaria, many different players in the same position. But Paratici works like this. He's in contact with many people. He knows so well Tolisso. He wanted him at Juventus years ago. Uh, he has a good relationship with Bayern Munich. Juventus and Bayern Munich were doing uh, many and many deals together in the last year. So... I'm sure that he's informed in this situation, but it's not like something that is closing now. But it could be an opportunity because the list is a player out of contact in one year. And so when Tottenham will decide what kind of player they want, they will go directly as they did with Romero. So this is Paratici's strategy. Talking with many players, but then when he decides what is the best way to go, he goes directly in some days, he goes to, to complete the deal. Brilliant. I assume it's James, James Ward-Prowse, so that kind of sit in uh, the similar way in that it's just one of many names. Yes, I think it's difficult. I think it's, it's the same way and it's also difficult. It's even more difficult than Toliso, for example, because of the price and because Southampton already lost Inks, Westergaard, so it's not easy also now to, to accept this kind of situation with World Pros and Aston Villa are keen on him if he will be on the market. Perfect. Well, look, let's move on to the, the, the striker situation, which I think is going to be uh, one of the big stories of the rest of this transfer window. Uh, we start with Duzan Vlahovic. Uh, a number of reports that Tottenham could be set to put in uh, a bid similar to the one for Martinez. Uh, is, is that bid incoming, do you think? Tottenham have an interest in this player. He's one of the favourite options of Fabio Paratici as a striker. Uh, personal opinion, we're talking about a fantastic player. I really love this player. Uh, but it's not easy. It's not easy because Fiorentina have no intention to accept 50 or 60 million euro. Atletico Madrid were prepared to arrive around 60 million euro and Fiorentina said no. They want to keep the player. This week, they will decide if trying again to extend this contract or if accepting that he's going to leave the club this summer. So the president, Comiso, this week will take a decision on, on, on Vlaovic. But Tottenham are killing him, are really in contact with his agent and they are keeping tabs on Vlaovic single, since a long time. So he's one of the players in the list, but it's not easy and there is still no bid from Tottenham. If we arrive, will be in the next few days, but it's now now for Fiorentina to make a decision on Vlaovic. So first step will be Fiorentina to decide and then Tottenham we decided to jump in the deal or not. Perfect. And if, if we do go for Vlahovic, do you think that maybe as a replacement for Harry Kane or is he someone that Tottenham want to, to play with the, the English striker? 
To be honest, I don't know because it depends why, what happens with, with Harry Kane. At the moment, the situation of Harry Kane is an incredible poker game. So they are, they are keeping, eye on, keeping an eye on, on Vlaovic because they know that maybe Harry Kane's situation could change in the next days. Or also as a backup, it would be a fantastic backup, in my opinion, because this guy is an incredible striker. Brilliant. Um, the Latero Martinez situation is one that's also quite interesting. See, um, as you reported, will be in talks with Inter Milan this week with regards to a new contract. But other reports saying that Tottenham aren't yet willing to, to give up on his pursuit. Uh, where do we where do we currently stand on that one? Inter will meet with his agent this week. Should be on on Wednesday, so it will be an important meeting to understand what happens. But Inter want to extend his contract and he wants to stay. So at the moment, the feeling around Inter is that they are not selling the player. It's true that Tottenham had a strong interest in Lautaro. Uh, they made a proposal for Lautaro Martinez more than one week ago. But Inter then sold Romero Lukaku to Chelsea, so they, they want to keep Lautaro Martinez also because Inter fans are furious because of Lukaku leaving and imagine losing also Lautaro Martinez could be a big problem for Inter. So at the moment they are stating that he's staying, then we will see. But at the moment, so they want to extend his contract and I think it will be really difficult to sign Lautaro Martinez because also Atletico Madrid has Tottenham. They were keen on Lautaro, but they are moving on different targets because they know that Lautaro Martinez this summer is not leaving Inter. Is there a possibility that Inter Milan's financial situation in, in the coming weeks forces their hand in this one? Because we all know the, the I suppose the rumours that are out there, but the, the severity of that, I know the owners had uh, their Chinese Super League team, Jiangsu Sunning, last year, they had to disband that, uh, and the financial uh, sort of worries have, have continued over. Is it possible that the Inter situation could change uh, financially, or will it simply be down to decision by the board? Possibility, I, I would say yes, because what happened with Lukaku was surprising. Uh, they say that Lukaku was untouchable and Lukaku was prepared to stay at Inter for many years and then they sold him in, in 10 days. So uh, mm-hmm. everything can happen in football in general and in particular when you have financial trouble as happened with Barcelona, with Messi, with Inter, with Lukaku. So I can't say no, there is no possibility. But at the moment, they say that Lautaro is staying. So the reality now is like this. If in some days will change, we will talk about it. Uh, perfect. Uh, one more striker that's been mentioned, Alex213 there asked in the live chat. Is there any truth in the Patrick Bamford links? It's one of the names. It's one of the names they have in the list. Uh, it's not a priority, to be honest, because Vlaovic is appreciated, Lautaro is appreciated, so it's not the first name in the list. But I'm told that Leeds have no intention to, to sell Bamford. So they, they hope to keep the player and they want to keep the player because they're happy with the team they have. They want to add maybe one or two signings. And so selling Bamford two weeks before the end of the window could be a problem for Leeds. Absolutely, I think that that's one that is probably just a bit a bit too difficult, especially considering how well Bamford did for them in the in the Premier League last year. Uh, quickly, the you broke the news exclusively last week, so first of all, congratulations to you on that. But the uh, Harry Kane bid coming in from Manchester City, could you give us a bit of detail on on what City are uh, reportedly set to propose? They are proposing. They are ready to propose because it's not an official bid yet, but they are ready. Mm-hmm. If Tottenham will change their position, one hundred fifty million euro guaranteed. They are also open to discuss about potential add-ons or players included in this value. So it's not 150 plus players. It's 150 at value of Harry Kane and available to include some player if they want. For example, 100 million euro plus one player, something like this. We will see because Tottenham in June said no to this possibility of including players. So let's see if now they will have the same stance. But we have to be respectful with Tottenham and say that Tottenham ownership and Daniel Levy are saying, no, we are not selling Harry Kane. So at the moment from Tottenham, they're saying they're not selling the player. But from Manchester City, they are not giving up on Harry Kane and they are desperate to sign Harry Kane and they want to try again to sign Harry Kane. So the situation is really poker game now, but I think in some days we'll have the final answer because City are pushing, but Tottenham are still saying no. And in some days they will clarify the situation. I think it is, poker game is, is a perfect phrase for it. So what we've been hearing all along is Tottenham are confident in keeping him and City are confident in signing him. It, yes. it is just a, a battle of wills at the moment. Uh, just one other potential departure. Marcelo says there in the live chat with Tongi and Dombele. There's reports that he's unhappy with uh, the potential sale of Serge Aurier and Moussa Sissoko, his close friends. Is there any potential for a move for Dombele this window? It's possible, but it's not a priority to sell Nombele. But for Sissoko, is one of the players in the list to leave the club. For Nombele, it depends by the bids. Remember that last year Inter wanted him, but Tottenham were not prepared to sell this player on loan or this kind of thing. So it has to be an important proposal. And at the moment, there is still no important proposal for Nombele. So we will see in the coming days. But I think it's not because of Sissoko and Doria, because they're friends. It's, we are not a school. So it's just because, <laughs> it's just because maybe if, if a good bid arrives, the player would be prepared to leave. But it's not a priority now for Tottenham. Now they have different priorities. Brilliant. He's definitely a player that I want to see say. I feel his potential is massive. 
And if he can get the, the kind of right system or right position at Spurs, I think he can go on to be a, a very, very good good player for us. But look, Fabrizio, thank you so much, as always, for your time. I, I, I mean it every time when I say it's an honour to, to get to chat uh, transfers about you. Like okay. I said, you're the you're the man in the window. You're the one who everyone goes to. And as Zoe said a while ago, you've been on point this window. So grazie for, for all your reporting. And that. Thank thanks, you. thanks for joining thank me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Always big pleasure. Thank you. And see you soon with many others. Spurs updates, I'm sure that Fabio Paratici will do some other thing on the on the market. So I will keep you posted. Thank you. Brilliant. Hopefully we do have a bit of news. Uh, to all our viewers, there's still 1,200 in here watching us live. Please do hit that like button if you have enjoyed the stream. Uh, you'll put your, your thanks in the comments for Fabrizio. And do make sure to subscribe if you are new uh, for more transfer talk coming up over the next couple of weeks. Hopefully with a few more here we goes from this man. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Uh, and let's hope it's a good one. As always, thank you so much for watching.